Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 9.5, Numerical Patterns. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to use two rules to generate or make a numerical pattern. Identify the relationship between terms in the pattern. This is kind of a long one. Make sure you pause and write the lesson objective in your notebook. All right, fifth graders, today's lesson is slightly different than the rest of the unit. We're actually not going to graph what we're going to make today, but we are going to make some data tables, which is going to help us learn how to make some more graph tables. So today's lesson is on numerical patterns, which we've talked about before with fractions and decimals. So we always need to find a rule and decide whether our pattern is getting bigger or smaller, but then we also need to see the relationship between two rules together. So let's begin by reading the unlock the problem. On the first week of school, Joe purchases two movies and six songs from his favorite media website. If he purchases the same number of movies and the same number of songs each week, how does the number of songs purchased compare to the number of movies purchased? Well, let's break this down. The purple box says, how many movies does he purchase? Well, it says he purchases two movies. Two movies. And how many songs does he purchase? He purchases six songs. So that means that every time he makes a purchase, he's always going to buy two movies and six songs. So we know that he's always going to have more songs than he has movies, but it's going to increase every time. So let's look at step one to help us show this pattern. The sequence for the first pattern shows that the movies, he has two and then he buys two, so that means he has four. And then he buys two more, so now he has six. And then he buys two more, now he has ten. That's not so hard of a pattern. We're just increasing by two movies each week. Now we want to look at the sequence for the number of songs each week. So this one, as we said, is increasing by six. So if he had six and he add, gets six more, now he has twelve. And then he gets six more, and now he has eighteen. And then he gets six more, and now he has 24. So now that we have these numbers, we need to be able to draw some relationships between them in order to answer this question. How does the number of songs compare to the number of movies? So in order to do that, we're going to make a data table. So we're going to compare them like they're ordered pairs. So you can see in week one, and I'm going to circle week one up here. Week one, I have two and six. And so I'm going to write that in a num ordered pair, two comma six. Now if we look at the second number, we have four, four movies, and twelve songs. So I'm going to write that four comma twelve. Then week three, we have, that's the third number, six comma eighteen. And week four, we would have ten comma twenty. So you can see we're looking at the relationship between those two numbers. All right, let's go on to step three. Step three says for each number pair, compare the numbers of movies to the number of songs and write a rule for this relationship. So you can see that for each numbered pair, so if we look at the example of week three, we have six and 18. So we need to think how are 6 and 18 related? Well I know that 6 times 3 is 18. So let's think about our other rules. We had 4 and 12. 4 times 3 equals 12. And if we look at week 4 we have 8 and 24 and it still follows 8 times 3 is 24. So my rule is that I'm going to multiply by three. So I will always have three times as many songs as I will have movies. Great job so far, fifth graders. Let's keep going. All right, in the example, we're creating another data table. Remember that it's not just continuing the pattern, but finding a relationship between these numbers. It says, 
When Alice completes each level of her favorite video games, she wins three extra lives and six gold coins. What rule can you write to relate the number of gold coins to the number of extra lives she has at the end of a level? How many extra lives will she have at the end of eight levels? Okay, so let's take this again one step at a time. When she finishes a level, she gets three extra lives. So our first row in this data chart is extra lives. And our rule is that she's going to add three every time. So you can see she started out with zero, then three, then six, then nine, then 12. Okay, so if we add, be careful here, it doesn't go from four to five, it goes from four to eight. So we know that if we could multiply, right, three times one, is three, three times two is six. So we're multiplying by three times the level. So eight times three would be 24. Now let's look at the number of gold coins. She gets six gold coins for every level. So our rule is go we're going to add six. So we have six and then 12 and then 18 and then 24 and then we have 48. So let's look at the relationship between 24 and 48. Well, I know that 24 plus 24 or 24 times two would be 48. So if I take, look at the arrow was going this way. If I take 48 and I divide it by two, then I'm going to get 24. Or what the opposite of multiplying would be dividing. So instead of dividing by two, I could multiply by one half. So 24 times one half, remember we would have to flip the two upside down, gives us two. So let's compare these together. Step one says we're going to show what we did on the first row. So we had zero to three, so we added three. Every level she passed, we added three. So for the next level, Alice is going to win three more lives. Now for the number of coins she has, we said that was plus six. So each time she passes a level, she gets six more. So from one level to the next, Alice wins six gold coins. Make sure you have all this written down because we're going to continue to step three and four. Step three and four are the lesson activities. I will get you started and then you'll have to answer on your math pages and be prepared to show your teacher. Step three says we're going to take all of those numbers that we just created and we're going to write them into ordered pairs. So if you look at the first, the level one on your data table, it says that we have three lives and six coins. So we wrote that as six comma three. Okay, if we look at level two, we have 12, six plus six is 12. So we have 12 coins and we have six lives. Level three was 18 coins and nine lives. Remember that I'm getting these off of the data table. I'm not just making these numbers up. So go back and look at the next, the slide before this and look at the data table to find these numbers. Your job is to fill in level four. Now it says, let's look at the rule. Remember we talked about this rule. If we are looking at six to 12, then we could divide 12 in half or we could multiply six by two. So it says for each level, the number of lives is one half the number of gold coins. So our rule is going to be to multiply by one half or divide by you fill in this blank here. What are we gonna divide by? The opposite of multiplying by one half. And you can also fill in this last spot right here. If you wrote it down from the slide before, you'll know the answer. You're looking for on level eight, what's the missing number? How many lives will she have? Great job, fifth graders. See you tomorrow.